Hey guys and welcome back. So previously in episode 5, you see me get some of the plasterboard on. Uh, you also seen the difference between using that horrible method of form instead of dot and dab. Uh, just to let you guys know, I reverted straight back to dot and dab because that is the number one. Welcome back guys to episode 6, so here's a couple of shots of where we're at, the, the room's all plasterboarded now, and I'm ready to tape up and get cracking baby. Remember plastering's a patient game, get your hat on, get your tools ready, get yourself together, and let's have a crack at it. So guys, this is DIY plastering, I've only plastered a chimney breast before, this is my first full room, so I cannot wait to get cracking. So first things first guys, you need to get your tools all nice and clean. Um, always make sure you clean down your tools when you finish plastering or when you've um, completed a filling job as such. Get your tools nice and clean. I use a sander. Not sure whether I should use a sander um, on these types of tools. Uh, as you can see it's starting to rust so I'll definitely do a bit of research into that. But what I can say is that when you first buy a trowel or a plastering tool, Make sure you get your sander on and sand all the corner edges down. Right guys, so this is the moment you've all been waiting for. The plaster's mixed. We're starting to slap it on the walls, baby. So you'll start to see here guys that I've been watching a lot of videos about plastering, uh, plastering for beginners, um, a guy called Alex Morley and these guys provide hints and tips on how you can do it and how you plaster a room and, and what you need to do and basically the features and, and the, the, the tips that the guys are giving you is just get your plaster on because if not, and I've experienced it before, the mixture starts to stay hard or gets hard, sorry, inside the buckets, which means that you know, the timing is crucial. So I was watching these guys do it and thinking, how can I do from a DIY perspective, have a crack, have a go, and hopefully be able to do this. And as they said, step one, slap it on. 
get it on. You'll see the floor at some point. I've got loads on the floor, but what I am doing is working through, slapping it on, and making sure it's fairly consistent across the patch. Um, and this is the first time I've done two walls together, so I'm not confident at this stage. What I am doing is I know that I can do it. Um, so once I get this on, I would leave this around, by the time I finish the wall, around 10 minutes. Um, it's probably what the, from the, from the left hand side when I first started this. So if it's around 10 minutes, I'm then ready to apply my second coat. So I'm cleaning down the tools, getting ready, mixing now the second batch ready to put on the wall. And this is a um, more watery based mixing as you can see um, in a minute once I've traveled down this wall. I'll be slapping the, the next coat on, um, which I may or may not have recorded, but again, it's just doing the exact same principle, just with a thinner coat. Um, you'll see lines throughout, however, the more time goes on, the more it's easier to get the lines out of the wall. It really is. I'm using a little cloth here just to dampen the wall as well. So guys, look at the state of that floor. Made an absolute mess of that floor. But hey ho, you live and you learn. Put a sheet down next time. This wall's had two coats now. Uh, it's troweled off so that it's all level. There's a couple of slight little marks and lines in there you can see. But, as I said before, plastering's a patient uh, and a waiting game. So, this one has just been slapped on. Uh, first coat on, so you just cover the wall. And you look at that and think, what an absolute state. But in reality, that's what it needs to look like. Um, that's the way you get the plastering. Uh, ready for its second coat which is here second coat inside the bucket uh, I'll start to slap that on it's a thin layer for the second coat and yeah it's looking alright isn't it it's looking good someone's happy with himself what a nightmare so that wall's now being troweled I'm probably on to more of a dry trowel now with a little bit of water um, it's looking great. This one's been smoothed out, so this has been finished. It's had two coats on, and I've done a first trowel over the top of that just to keep it nice and smooth. You'll see some tram lines inside there, but don't worry about them. That's my learning. I was obviously bringing the trowel out too quick, which was bringing the tram lines in. Um, and yeah, it looks the best still at this stage, but don't worry about it. This is what it looks like. You've just got to really be patient and just relax a little bit with it so let's flip you to what it looks like two days after and uh, we'll see the difference hope oh, guys so here we are excuse the mess but the walls are all plastered they're not fully dry as you can see but in a real good position so what I still need to do is mount a double cat 5 point here, uh, just terminate cat 5 uh, in here. I just need to now isolate the power from here, change this cover, remove the back plate and put a silver 20mm back box in and then I need to extend the ring main. So that will be a quick fix once I get 5 minutes. And as you can see, yeah, so if you look, look, I have to apply a little bit more plaster here, which is why it's taking a little bit more time to dry. But yeah, overall, very, very happy with it. Oh, and I've got this bit to do here. As you can see, so all of the nice beading down the edges of here, I just need to do this bit. I did have a little bit on here, but I only put half on, so I'm not entirely sure why I've done that. Um, probably because I'm an idiot. So that's stuck on there now. I need to take that nail out of there because it's just temporary. In fact, I'm putting architrave around the edge of there anyway as a finish for the door. And I'm also going to put some architrave around this edge of this door. Skirting board. The skirting board's going to sit up against the wall, obviously. I just need to plan that all the way around. I just need to start thinking about flooring. So I think inside here, oh, and there's going to be a radiator here. Um, I'm yet to decide whether I'm going to do that or not, but we'll see. This is going to get mounted on the wall. 
here and I'm gonna have one running along the bottom of the bench there for the back also and then what I'm going to do is the workbench will sit along the wall and I'll have a chest of drawers there it'll be sat on the bottom of that wood as well all fixed in from the bottom using clips and then that means I can um, a bit of a floating worktop as such so yeah come along really nice plastering looks absolutely brilliant so really impressed got some sanding to do up here i just launched a full bit on there so i need to sand that down so a little bit of sanding to do i have to cut some holes in the ceiling but they're two minute sort of patchwork jobs i want to go around all the edges of the room just to make sure i'm happy with everything before i start painting so fingers crossed we can get a lick of paint on it this weekend and in terms of the garage, so in terms of the garage side, I got a couple of fireboards dropped off today. I'm going to get them slapped on this side of the wall, which will make everything look nice and neat. All the gaps will be nice and sealed, and yeah, it'll look great. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and comment, guys.